campaign optimization settings. There's some good ones, there's some bad ones, and then there are some that it kind of depends on the situation. So you either do select them or you don't. I'm gonna be going over all these things in today's video. All right, so the two main type of campaigns I'm going to be covering are a lead campaign and a sales campaign. Those are the big two, so to speak, that the vast majority of people are going to be using in order to grow their business. Obviously, there are a whole slew of other objectives that are worthwhile and very worthy to use. If you're curious what they all mean, I actually have a very detailed video that you can check out here that covers all 22 Facebook ad objectives. But for the other ones, such as video views, traffic and stuff like that, honestly, you can just use the default settings. Yes, there are some things that you can modify that might change your performance here and there, but we're talking about like on the margins, it's really not going to make a massive, massive difference. So for all those other settings, or sorry, I should say all for all those other campaign objectives, just use the default settings. But here I'll walk you through a lead campaign first and then a sales campaign, and I'll tell you which settings to choose for each. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so starting off here, we're gonna go ahead and create a lead campaign. So I'm gonna start off with leads, go ahead and continue. And this is the first decision that you have to make. So you can go with their recommended settings where it says use preset campaign optimizations to help meet your goals. Preset settings include Advantage Plus audience, Advantage Plus placements, and more. I do not recommend going with that. There are a couple of those settings that I am personally not a fan of, or I think you should have the choice of whether or not you want the setting because in some scenarios it's good and in other scenarios it's bad so go ahead and go with the manual leads campaign setup all right perfect i'm not going to name anything here but obviously that's something that you're going to want to do and by the way if you actually want a complete step-by-step -step tutorial on how to set up a lead generation campaign you're in luck because i actually have a detailed tutorial that you can check out right here all right, so moving on down, here is the next decision that you have to make. You either have to choose if you stick with the default setting of Advantage Campaign Budget Plus, um, or if you want to go with an ad set level budget. So the way I think about this, it depends on how much you are spending. If your spend is pretty substantial, I would actually recommend going with Advantage Campaign Budget Plus. Yes, there still might be some advantages to using ad set level budget optimization, but for example, if you're spending $20,000 a day managing that, at the asset level as opposed to the campaign level is going to become very cumbersome and it may not be worth all that extra time for making small little improvements like that. However, if you are very low ad spend, I would say certainly spending less than $100 a day and even as little as $1,000 a day. I know for a lot of businesses that may sound like a lot, but kind of in the grand scheme of things, when you compare other businesses that are spending out there, $1,000 a day is still not that much. In those types of scenarios, I would still recommend ad set level budget. You're just going to get better performance performance, you can tweak things as you see fit, not as the algorithm sees fit from a budgeting standpoint. All right, so like I said, most cases, you know, depending on where you're at in your business, you know, but for small businesses, you know, I would say the vast majority are gonna turn that one off. So now going on over to the ad set level, you want to go with website conversions if you are truly driving people over to a website. Now, if you want to run a messenger campaign or an instant forms campaign or anything like that, that's totally fine. I'm not saying you should never ever do these, but again, just kind of like in the vast majority of scenarios for most cases, you know, people are going to be running a website conversions campaign, right? There. So then once you have that selected, the next thing you want to choose is your performance goal. It defaults to maximize number of conversions and you do want to stick to that. Now there are some other options on here such as maximize the number of landing page views, maximize the number of link clicks, unique reach, impressions. I would only do these if you're not seeing the results that you were hoping for. And really the only one out of all these I would even contemplate trying would be maximize number of landing page views. But in honestly, 99.9% percent of scenarios, I am just going to stick with the default of maximize the number of conversions. Then you have to select your correct conversion event. This is a lead campaign. So I will be choosing the lead objective right there. You can optionally put a target cost per goal. You know, I've never really seen this work that well. You can give it a try, but I recommend leaving that blank. So the next thing you want to do here is click on show more options. This is something that is easily skipped because it doesn't really stand out too much, but there's an important step here that you do need to change and that is your attribution setting it always defaults no matter what objective you choose leads or sales it's going to default to a seven day click one day view attribution setting but for your a lead campaign which again a lead is something that is free you want to click on this ed button and you want to change this to a one day click through attribution window now i know what some of you might be thinking oh but so and so i heard some 
somewhere else that you want to do the seven day attribution window because that's going to show you people who convert over a period of seven days. And while they're not wrong, there's something they're also forgetting. The attribution setting, it's not just about the window of when someone converted, whether it was today or the last seven days. It also changes the way the ads optimize based upon the time it takes to make the decision. So here we are optimizing for leads, which again is a free event. So let's just stick with a simple free lead magnet, some sort of PDF checklist that we are driving traffic to. So this is a quick decision. It does not take time for someone to think, oh, should I really opt into this free lead magnet? You know, let me first go home, talk to my spouse about it. We'll weigh the pros and cons on whether or not I should opt into this free lead magnet, right? That doesn't happen. It's either something that they want to do right then and there, or they don't. The algorithm will take that into account and go in front of those fast decision makers and you're able to get more conversions more quickly and get a cheaper cost conversion with the one day click attribution window. And you can leave the one day view in there as well. That's really not going to change things in any huge way right there. However, if you do the seven day attribution window, you're going to get fewer conversions over the long run because you're going to get in front of those slower decision makers. You're going to see them like if someone saw your ad, you know, on a Monday and they decided not to opt into a Friday, you'll see that with the seven day attribution window, whereas you would not see that with the one day attribution window. But those instances are so few and far between because like I said, like very few people we're talking about less than 1% are going to take days in order to, you know, think about whether they should opt into your free thing. So for anything that is free with the lead campaign, always go with the one day click one day view. All right, moving on down, you cannot edit these things when it comes to the lead objective. So you go ahead and leave those there. Dynamic creative, you can turn this on if you want to test a bunch of different ad copy variations and a bunch of different copy variations. So this is optional. This, you know, in some scenarios, it can work fine. And in other scenarios, it just doesn't make sense. I would say in most cases, you're going to leave it off. But again, I don't want you to just completely discard this forever and ever moving forward. You may want to consider that um, moving down. Then when it comes to your start date, this actually does not matter whether it's a lead or sales campaign. You always want to start your campaign nice and early in the morning. So I start mine at 12.30 a.m. Pacific time. That way, the first full 24 hours that this campaign is live is during the same day for the most part. Right, There's a 30 minute time lapse right there, but for the most part, um, it's all within the same day. So the algorithm gets to see the fluctuations in behavior for your target audience. And also it's not going to try to consume all of your budget within a short amount of time. If I were to launch this at 8 p.m. at nighttime, it's going to try to spend all $20 from 8 p.m. to midnight, which I don't want it to do. Then we keep on scrolling here Add scheduling. You cannot choose this or modify this for the leads objective. So you can go ahead and leave that right there. And then for the audience controls advantage plus, or should you switch to the original audience? Well, it depends. And I actually have another video where I covered this, the pros and cons and my personal results of using Advantage Plus versus not using Advantage Plus. So you can go ahead and check it out right here, but it's on a case by case basis. All right, moving on down. The final thing is placements and you just want to leave it at the default of Advantage Plus placements or in other words, all placements. So there is a type in place I will say to customize your placements. But again, in 99% of the scenarios, you know, okay, maybe 99 is a little bit high, but 95% of scenarios, just having Advantage Plus placements makes the most sense. Now, one thing that I do want to point out that a lot of people do that really is not necessary is that they'll come in here to manual placements and they'll go there and then they'll keep on scrolling down and they'll go to streamer options and they'll go right here to devices. And then they only want to show up in front of mobile devices that are connected to Wi-Fi. This is 100% unnecessary. This is like an old strategy from honestly, like five, six years ago that some people thought it got you better results, but it's been thoroughly tested and this is just a complete waste of your time. So make sure you do not fall for that trap. And there you have it. So that is how you set up the optimization settings for a lead campaign. Now let's switch over to a sales campaign real quick before I cover the sales campaign optimization settings. Do me a huge favor. If you are enjoying this video, I am getting dangerously close to 1000 subscribers. I would absolutely love your support. So if you can hit that subscribe button, it would mean the world to me. All right. So starting off, we're gonna go ahead and click create. And as we start building this, I'll tell you right off the bat that many of the settings are going to be exactly the same. There's gonna be a few differences, but it's not going to be a world of difference. So here we're starting off with Advantage Plus Shopping or a manual sales campaign. I will say that when it comes to the Advantage Plus Shopping campaign, that can work sometimes. It's Again, it's not my favorite in thing in the world because there are some settings that I wish you could modify when you change that. But I also have gotten good results using the Advantage Plus Shopping campaign. So I will say that it's worth testing at some point, but in most cases you just wanna come 
come down here to the manual sales campaign. Go ahead and click continue. And then we can go right here. So special categories. This is, I do not have a special category ad, but if you do, for example, if you're in the employment space, housing space, or anything like that, make sure you select the right category right here. And just like before, you get to choose whether you want advantage plus, um, sorry, advantage campaign budget plus or not. And it's really the same advice. If you're spending thousands upon thousands of dollars a day, it probably does make sense sticking with this. But if you have a lower budget, I just recommend going ahead and turning it off. And then let's go to the ad set level here. Once again, this is a sales campaign. So you want to make sure you are selecting the website here. It's pretty rare that you're going to be driving sales, a direct sale and being able to choose one of these other ones down here. I honestly, I feel like 100% of the time you're just going to leave this at website. Then here, maximize the number of conversions. Once again, that is what you want to leave it at. Here you see the same ones, but for a sales campaign, I do not recommend ever using any one of these. So for the lead one, I said like, you know, in an extreme scenario, you could potentially test the landing page views and see if that works for you. But when it comes to the sales campaign, no, I do not recommend doing that in any way, shape or form. So always make sure you leave it at maximized number of conversions, then come down here, select your purchase event that you're optimizing. And then once again, you can try to optimize for a target cost per goal, but I do not see that work well for sales. Once again, we want to click on show more options. And here there is a choice, right? We talked about in the lead one that you want to make sure that this is the one they click when they view attribution window for the sales campaign. It really depends. So what I always tell people is that it mostly depends on the price of the item that you are selling right now. So if you are $50 or less, either the one day or the seven day could work for you. I've seen it work both ways. So for example, actually this just happened. I have a client selling a $49 product. He has been using the seven day attribution window since the dawn of his campaigns. And then I went in there and tested the one day attribution window and we're actually getting better results that way. Because under $50, that can still be a little bit of an impulse purchase. The $50 mark is really certainly pushing that. But think about, for example, if you're selling like a $17 product, you know, that's not a massive purchase for a lot of people. And so they don't have to put a lot of thought to it. So again, when you choose the one day attribution window, you're getting in front of those fast decision makers of like, oh yes, for sure. This is what I want. I'm going to go ahead and buy it. Obviously, as you keep on getting more expensive, it becomes less and less of an impulse buy. But even up to $50, like I said, I have seen the one day attribution window work well. So if you're $50 or less, just go ahead and test it out stick with the default first of seven days and then if you don't see the results that you like go ahead and test the one day and see if that works better for you beyond fifty dollars it really doesn't become an impulse buy almost for for anyone unless you're a billionaire right so if you're priced above fifty dollars whether you're sixty dollars or six thousand dollars right you don't want to be using the one day attribution window you definitely want to be sticking with the seven day all right so we'll go ahead and test the seven day for this initial go around like i said you certainly can test the one day. Now for a purchase campaign, regardless of whether you stick for seven day or one day, I actually, in this case, always get rid of the view through conversion because it's going to try to count sales of people who saw an ad seven days ago, maybe for, as a quick glance, they didn't click on the ad, they didn't engage with the ad. They just kind of randomly th uh, scrolled by it. And then maybe they did a Google search and they stumbled upon my website and then bought my product like that. You know, the ad in that sense really doesn't contribute much to a sale. I like to get rid of that regardless of whether I'm doing the seven day or the one day. And once again, you cannot change any of the settings right here. And then once again, dynamic creative, it's more of an optional choice. It can work for you sometimes if you want to test a bunch of different things. Uh, but I would say in most cases, you're probably going to leave that off. And then once again, we want to make sure that this is going live nice and early in the morning. I would say this is even more important for a sales campaign over a lead campaign. And then we're going to go scroll down all the same things here apply when it comes to the targeting. You might want to use advantage plus you might not want to use advantage plus and then same thing with the advantage plus placements i will say however for sales campaigns i am more often modifying the placements because if i go to manual placements right here it is almost i don't want to say never because that's very hyperbolic but um it's possible that i've never seen a single purchase come from absent sites right so uh just to conserve my budget and make sure i'm not spending anything there i will often get rid of that right there but like i said if you leave it at the default fault of an advantage plus that's also not the end of the world it's not going to direct hundreds or even thousands of dollars over to this you know I might direct a couple of dollars that way <clears throat> and so that's not going to ruin your results in any way shape or form but like I said since I don't think I've ever seen a purchase um, I'm not too hesitant to get rid of that placement all right and there you have it those are all the optimization settings you want to select or consider when putting together your lead and sales campaign so hopefully
hopefully you found this tutorial helpful. If you have any questions about any of these settings, I know there's a lot of them, just let me know in the comments down below and I'll be happy to answer them for you. Thank you so much for tuning in and I will see you next time.